Hello, I'm Sharon Ross with the Capital City Arts Initiative based here in Carson City, Nevada. We are here today at Western Nevada College's Bristlecone Gallery where the Capital City Arts Initiative has produced the Raices exhibition by Ruby Barrientos. Ruby, welcome. So um, tell us about your background and where you, how long you've been, you're in Reno. Tell us how long have you been there? Yeah, so my name is Ruby Barrientos and I'm a local artist here in Reno, Carson now, but this would be my first show in Carson. Um, born and raised in Reno, my parents immigrated here um, from El Salvador and I'm the youngest of, there's a total of five of us and I'm the first um, born here in America. And uh, yeah, my work really just touches on my culture, heritage, identity. Um, it's a way for me to not only connect deeper within my, to myself, but also to my roots. And that's why I call the show uh, Raices, because it, it, it's basically showing all of my work from going back to El Salvador when I was uh, when I had just turned 30 in 2017, and I hadn't been back there since I was like eight years old. And so it was great to like connect uh, to El Salvador and my family there, my culture as an adult. And then once I got back here, I felt very ignited. And that's when all this work was created after. So starting from 2017 to 2023. Ruby, tell us about this this door piece that you, you, you built. Yeah, so I, I actually found the door off of Wells Avenue. Um, it was just being thrown out um, behind this tattoo shop that I would go and hang out and draw and like spray paint at. And I thought, oh, I could make something out of this. And it just so happened that uh, Vivian the director of the Lily at the time at UNR um, had proposed an idea for me to create a dialogue piece with one of the pieces at the Lily. And so it just kind of all happened with the right timing. And this is when I created this piece, um, which I titled, I believe, if I can remember it here. Uh, Las riquezas de la vida no tienen precio, which means the riches of life don't have a price. Um, it basically just touches on how we can see things as discarded, whether it's something like the store or even just like people, you know, in relation to like class or race. And so, um, I, I started using a lot of symbols in this piece, so I use the not equal sign a lot because for me, uh, this symbol represents how the illusion of equality that we live in under society, especially for me as a person of color. And um, I put the dollar sign here as well as just a jab at capitalism and yeah I, I put more I actually put the title on the door you can't really you can kind of tell if you look closely um, but I use the not equal sign as well and I use also this question mark which was which was a symbol I created to just for viewers to like be just question everything. That's kind of my motto. Like, don't take things for face value. Like, question things. Question why society is the way it is. And this was definitely like the beginning of me starting to do that within myself and within my own like decolonization. So this piece is really important. It also like um, was a piece where I, I started to use this symbol that I have coined as my signature, which is an M here at the very 
um, side here. And it actually encapsulates all of my dad's initials. So it's a way to like keep my dad alive, who passed when I was young, but also not even him, but like all of my ancestors, because I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be alive without them. I wouldn't be creating this work without them. So yeah, this piece is, was a really fun piece to create. And I, I just feel like it's a strong symbol of just, you know, power and to just stand in your power and to question things and not, I don't know, not let society tell you that you're less than. That's kind of how I see it, so. Yeah, it actually started with the last piece, the door piece. Uh, that's when I coined the phrase. I was researching uh, Keith Haring because the dialogue piece I had uh, was going to do my response to was a Keith Haring piece. And as I researched him, I realized uh, this was actually after he had passed, but the Guggenheim Museum had titled a show of his uh, like Aztec new wave or something, and which I found problematic because Keith Haring was white. And so I thought, well, I mean, I have Mayan ancestry and I'm like the new wave. I'm, you know, creating contemporary artwork. And I thought that's a reflection of my Mayan ancestry and my culture. And I felt like I'm gonna, take that and flip it. And so I started calling uh, my work New Wave Mayan, and that's how it all started. So Ruby, tell us about the symbolism in this piece. Yeah, so this piece uh, I titled The God of Revolution. At the time that I created this work, uh, it was in the midst of the pandemic and everything that happened with George Floyd and just you know, it was something, a timestamp in time that we couldn't ignore and it really made me reflect on my decolonization and also like anti-racism. And I created this God which goes with the banner pieces to the side, just as like a refuge for people that are fighting for equality to like pray to or to get strength from and this is how I saw this deity and I again used you know the not equal signs and equal signs but I, I always tend to use the not equal signs just to like make the point that we're not equal and society you know kind of brings this illusion of equality, but if you really look through all these systems that are in place, you can see how they uphold uh, white supremacy and capitalism and all these things are so intertwined. Um, again, I use the question mark to question everything. And, and I put the equal sign there because I feel like this God, you know, is, a representation of people that are fighting for that equality, that are fighting for what's right and to stand up against, you know, these inequalities that we, people of color are facing, and even not just people of color, people like that are a lower class, you know, that maybe not be of color. Um, and then I have these warriors here on these two pieces and another warrior and then just warriors here just representing you know the warrior and all of us to fight through and survive and to do our best to to fight for our rights and 
Yeah, this is a very, one of my favorite pieces that I've created and I uh, had a really good team or someone behind me to help me with this piece. Thanks, Nick. And uh, this uh, cross here, I, used, I like to use double crosses or upside down crosses a lot. It's just, I grew up very Christian and uh, just makes me think of like colonialism and how, uh, you know, religion was used to, uh, for genocide and so many things. And it's just my way of kind of taking that symbol and making it my own and, and just taking that back and like getting that power back, right? Because really that was used to oppress. And like, and this piece is the opposite of that. This piece is about fighting oppression and, and, and just standing up and, and giving support to those that are fighting for what's right on this earth. And yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. Ruby, tell us about this piece and the, the media that you used in your decisions. Yeah, so this piece uh, is part of the series, which was called Prayers uh, of the Revolution, Rezos de la Revolución, and it goes in conjunction with the, the deity piece that we just saw. And yeah, I created a banner, a banner. It all started when I went to a George Floyd uh, protest here locally in Reno, and I created a sign on fabric, um, you know, just in support in my own way. And then I realized, you know, I can make work that's talking about what's happening. And it's also a way for me to, like, be introspective within myself and my own, you know, there's a lot of racism within Latin culture. Um, and so I, I wanted to reflect on that too. So do, it was not only like a way to decolonize, but it was also, there's a, a lot of anti-racist work within that too for me. And so I started listening to Malcolm X and I listened to his autobiography uh, just over and over and over again, and it, just consuming everything that was going on, and that's how this work came about. I was researching Malcolm X and like Angela Davis, and I started to just uh, write a lot of different things that were happening there and if you look closely on the piece you can see all the writing that I wrote um, I'm trying to see if I can it's a little hard to read but there's like something that says like colonialism and so it's it's kind of like a map in a way of like all these different topics um, that we're not only from the past, but also like very connected to the present, right? You would think that we're in 2020 at the time and that we would be more evolved as humans and there would be more equality. But upon researching, you know, listening to Malcolm X and really like diving into that, there's just so many parallels that have not changed. It's still the same, you know? And so this work, was really important because I, I was putting all that in, this information on this on this piece, and then there's also if you look closely there is a deity painted, and it also it, this deity represents all the people fighting again for equality, you know, going to the protests, uh, activists, and it was, but in general just people of color, we've been going through so much oppression and we're still here and we'll, we're still fighting. And so that's 
where the symbolism lies within like the burning and the tears and the handprints. It's like representing the struggle, the struggles of people of color in America. And, but we're still here, we're still fighting and we're still fighting for this equality. And yeah, I'm, this was really hard to make. You know, I, I was going through so much emotionally and just feeling too, like collectively, the emotion, emotions of the collective. And I feel like this still stands, you know, this goes within what's happening right now within Palestine and Israel, you know, the genocide that's happening. So yeah, this piece is really important. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to create this work. Ruby, you mentioned um, the Latino community. What has the response been to your work from the broader Latino community? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if a lot of people really saw this particular work because it was during the pandemic and it hung at UNR, but people were really homebound, you know, people didn't want to go out and about. So this is the first time like the three pieces that are here that were in that series are being shown again, which, which is cool because I, I feel like it's still very relevant, you know? And I hope, you know, the people here, at, uh, students here at WNC can connect with it and looking forward to hearing what, they, what their thoughts are. Ruby, you've used um, some non-traditional materials in your work. So tell us about the materials you used and how you built this piece along with the meaning behind it. Yeah, so this piece came about uh, upon experimenting with a friend. He has a CNC machine and he had the idea of my drawings translating really well within the CNC. So we did a number of different experiments. Uh, I had this opportunity to be the Reno City artist in 2021, and then I proposed to him the idea, you know, that I had. I, I wanted to use the machine. I wanted to light up. So he he definitely was a huge part of this project. He helped me bring it to fruition. And uh, thank you to Andrew Frank. And yeah, so he helped me yeah, create it. We used plexiglass, uh, MDF, there's epoxy, and then LED lighting. And so I called it ancestros, which means ancestors, um, because I wanted to bring my drawings to life on a bigger capacity. And, and I thought a lot about my visit to El Salvador back in 2017 and, and how I went to the ruins and the ruins, you know, they're just so big, these big monuments. And then even having gone to like Mexico City and seeing uh, Tio Tichuacan, the uh, pyramids there and just, just researching artifacts and seeing how these deities that were created in the past were just so magnificent and had so much power. And so I wanted to create these pieces as like an ode to my ancestors and to create new monuments. You know, as I spoke before, my work is called New Wave Mayan. So I wanted to create a contemporary version in my way of these artifacts and monuments that exist, that have existed in the past, but recreate my own version for the now, you know? And so that's why I created these works and it was an ode to, yeah, just my ancestors and just wanting to create these deities that come out in my drawings as, as larger than life. Can you tell me what a CNC machine is? 
Yeah, so a, a CNC machine is usually used within carpentry from what I understand. A lot of woodworkers use it. So it usually makes uh, the markings uh, if within cabinetry that you may see. And so that is the technology that we use to create this. Ruby, this piece behind you is the centerpiece of the gallery. Please tell us more. Yeah, it's called Hijo de Bukele. So Bukele is currently the uh, president of El Salvador right now. But he's uh, very authoritarian and basically, uh, yeah, kind of leaning more towards fascism, really. He's called himself the dictator of El Salvador, even though that's not true, but it's kind of going towards there. Uh, basically, I wanted to bring attention to what's happening there with, that, with him and that administration. Currently, um, they have the ability, or his administration has uh, created a policy where they can just go and uh, arrest anyone that is considered a gang member. So uh, the police there could just arrest someone if they have a tattoo and claim that they're affiliated with MS-13 and, and lock them up and there's no really due process. They'll just be in prison. And a lot of people have lost family members in, in that prison system. They're, they're either there or, or they just disappear or they wind up dead. and. So no one's really talking about that. Um, he also has created one of the largest prisons recently, um, I believe within the Americas, um, or close to the largest prison. I'm pretty sure you might be able to Google it. And so I, I created this piece just to bring attention to what he's doing there and how it's you know anti-humanitarian and yeah it's it's serious and I want I wanted to just create a piece that talks about that and so I again I wanted to create uh, kind of a monument and that's what I did I call it a monument of truth because it's exposing all the truths of what's happening there and so I I also defaced it. As you can see, there's a lot of um, graffiti and writing on it, similar to my banner pieces. So I, I kind of took that uh, process and just applied it to this, to just write all the different information that's, hap that's going on there. And I wanted to get people to look at the piece, you know, and uh, look close. and. and and see what's on the writing and get curious and do their own research. And so the piece here, uh, the deity head, you know, I, I painted it gold um, in a way of defacement because of what the president is doing there. And he obviously has a hunger for greed and he actually, uh, was able to do cryptocurrency in the country as a form of currency, but a lot of the people there don't even know what that is, you know? And so he he's definitely has mishandled a lot of the country's resources and it's not actually helping people. And so that was the reason I used the gold there was just kind of to bring attention to what he's doing there with the resources of the country and yeah, it's, he's definitely someone to look out for. And I feel like right now there's a lot of administrations that are leaning towards author, authoritarian, they're authoritarian and fascism. And, and you know, the, these are things we need to pay attention to, you know, and, and it also correlates to the uh, banner pieces, you know, we need to fight against 
these things because you know we we want to we want a future where we're collectively working with each other not one where we're divided Ruby, what are you working on now? Yeah, so as of late, I've been dabbling with collage, which has been really fun. I, I don't know, I never thought I'd like collage, and then a friend was like, try collage, and I did, and I, I really started to enjoy it. And I, I kind of see them as like explorations of my subconscious, but also I feel like with my work, there's a spiritual aspect, uh, and I feel like it's also a channel for me to connect to other worlds, especially like to my ancestors, like I do when I draw. And so, yeah, I feel like that reflects within the work. A lot of the theme really is just about connecting to these worlds that we cannot see, and I feel like that's very tied to my ancestors to where they are and I know I feel their presence I know they're with me and I feel and and cre these creations are a tangible way of me to connect to them Ruby thank you for doing this talk with us you had wonderful answers um, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, no I'm just grateful to you Sharon and your uh, staff here at the CCAI for all your support and help. It wouldn't this exhibition would have wouldn't have happened without all of you. So well, thank you. Thank you. We, <laughs> you're the one that needs to be thanked. <laughs> you and your team with me yeah. and Ashley for hanging this show. Um, it was amazing. And when it was installed, we had a snowstorm to help confuse, bring, <laughs> complicate bringing the art in. But. <laughs> Yeah, done. thank you to Ashley Frost and Nicolina Collett for your support and help in getting this exhibition hung up. So the, as part of the exhibition, CCI commissioned an essay. Um, you can get a handout here in the gallery, and it will be posted this weekend up on our website. Um, so Mark wrote a, a great essay discussing uh, the history that Ruby has just talked about, and um, so come to the gallery. Um, the exhibition is up through April 12th, and the gallery here at Western Nevada College is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, so again, Ruby, thank you for sharing your work with the college. Thank you to the college for letting the CCIA use the space. And you can follow CCAI on our website, ccaind.org. And you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, please do. If you go to our website, you can subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, where we tell you about all the exhibitions that we have in our four galleries. And there's plenty of parking at our four galleries, which is good to know. And you will find more exhibitions on our YouTube channel and we have over five dozen videos that you can watch interviews with artists and we want to thank our funders for their generous support including the National Endowment for the Arts and the Nevada Governor's Office of Financial Assistance. So thank you to everybody and come see the show. The reception for Ruby's exhibition is Friday. February 23rd, 5 to 6.30, with the artist introduction at 5.30. See you then. Oh, and I'll plug myself. You can follow me at in on Instagram at ruby underscore jo, and you can uh, check out my website, uh, newwavemayan.com. <laughs>